Choropleth maps look simple, but actually there's a lot of choices you have to make. The good news is all you really need to know is your map's purpose. Hi, I'm Heather and I'm a cartographer. Have you ever opened this pane in ArcGIS Map Viewer and thought, yep, looks good, moving on. Or maybe, oh no, I really hope no one ever asks me about these numbers. I get it, there's a lot of options here and it's really tempting to just ignore them and hope for the best. But in fact, just a bit of experimentation with these features can really improve your map. So how do you know what the right configuration is? That's a trick question. There is no right configuration, not even for the same data set. It all depends on the goals of your map. What are you trying to say? In this video, I'll share five examples using this data set. It maps maximum allowed building heights. To make a choropleth map, I'll choose counts and amounts color. Let's pretend that my goal is just to explore the data. So for that, the default configuration works pretty good. I have the high to low theme, uh, that's using light blue for the areas where only short buildings are allowed, and dark blue for the areas where you can build really tall ones. And this histogram helps me explore the data. I can see that the lowest height is 8 meters and the tallest is 90. The average is 17.8. And according to the histogram bars, most of the data is down here below 34. And there's a few outliers that are really tall. Everything on the map between 34 and 90 meters is the same dark blue. So to explore my data, I can play with this breakpoint a bit and see how it affects my map. I can play with this one too. But if I'm making a map to help someone else explore this data, someone who doesn't have access to these sliders, I think I want to show the full range so they're not missing anything. Now, that washes out the map a fair bit, doesn't it? So I'll also choose a different color scheme, one with a bit more dynamic range, so they can see more detail in the map. Okay, so I think that's perfect for a map that's intended to help someone explore the data. What if my goal was to provide a reference to the public so they could check what the allowed building height was in any given area? Well, this map actually isn't bad because it's a web map so people can click each feature and find out with the pop-up. But what I would also do in this case is turn on classified data. Now it's easy for someone to look at a polygon, consult the legend, and know exactly what category it falls into. I'll increase the number of classes to get better granularity, but I don't want too many classes. Like with six, I'm a bit worried that some people won't be sure which class a parcel falls in. Five classes looks good. And in fact, five is the commonly recommended number for core pleth maps. And now I have a map that's great as a public reference tool. So what if I was a building developer looking for a good place to build a 12 story apartment building? That's about 36 meters tall. Well, I could use this map and only look at the darkest two colors. It would work. But if I was designing a map with this purpose in mind, I could do much better. I'm going to turn off classified data. That will allow me to choose a different theme. I'll choose above. This theme emphasizes data above a key value. My key value, of course, will be 36 meters, actually 35. Now anything more than 35 meters falls in this color range, and anything less than that is a pale yellow. Well, the above theme is good, and you would think it would be good for this scenario. I, I did, but you always have to try a thing to find out. You have to assess whether or not the map you made actually achieves your goal. And in this case, it doesn't. This orange area is just as viable an option to the developer as the yellow areas. but it's really hard to see. You know, if you have a really simple goal, it probably calls for a really simple map. This developer just wants to see yes places and no places. So I'll turn classified data back on and drop it down to two classes. I'll set the midpoint to 35. Now this map is super simple. I can make it extra crystal clear by changing the legend labels. Blue areas are possible building locations and yellow areas are not. And now I have a map suitable for the building developer. Here's another possible goal for this map. Perhaps you work for the city's planning department and you're preparing a report about height allowances. You want to set the stage for the current situation. In this case, I might use the above and below theme. This allows you to emphasize areas that diverge from a midpoint. For example, 
the data set's average. Now, the more red an area is, the shorter the allowed building height is compared to the average. And the more blue something is, the taller the allowance is from the average. But is the average a meaningful midpoint? Often it is, but I don't think it is for this particular map. I thought maybe the mode might make more sense than the mean, so I made a chart. And I can see that the most common building height is 11 meters. That's about three stories tall. Let's set the midpoint to 11. Now you can see where allowed building heights are unusually short in red and where all the taller allowances are in blue. This map identifies which parts of the city are different from the usual, and that can be a helpful starting point when planning for change. So I think it works for the planning report scenario. Now let's say your goal is more persuasive. You're trying to convince the city to allow taller buildings in areas that have historically only had single family homes. Well, I might go back to the high to low theme, but I'll flip the color ramp. Before the emphasis, that is the dark colors, was on the areas with really tall allowances. Now the map emphasizes areas where only short buildings are allowed. Most people interpret dark colors to mean more, but sometimes the smaller things are more important. And that's the case in this map. I want to draw people's attention to areas where building heights are low. Now this map just shows us most of the city, so it's not telling a very clear story. I think it should focus just on the lowest building heights so I'm going to add a filter to get rid of any areas where the building height is more than 14 meters. Back on the style pane, I can click the reset slider positions button so the histogram can recognize the new data range. I can increase clarity even more. There's not a whole lot of values between 8 and 14, so having a continuous range of colors isn't really necessary. I'll classify the data into three classes, 8 to 10, 10 to 12, and 12 to 14. And I'll choose a color scheme that is a little less calming than the default blue because I'm trying to spur people to action. And I can actually tweak this color scheme further. I'll make the brown just a little bit darker. Okay, so now I have only three colors, which is really easy to read. And that's important for maps that are intended to persuade. I think this map really makes the point that most of the city has the same low building height, and it makes it seem like an easy task to increase height allowances since there's so many places to choose from. That's a persuasive map. So there you have it. I just showed you five different maps you can make using the same layer with the same field and the same symbology method. Which one is best? It depends on your goals. Are you trying to explore data, make a yes, no decision, persuade people? So next time you sit down to make a Coropleth map, take a moment to figure out your map's goal. Then try a bunch of different things with these features. Experiment, have fun, compare your results and ask yourself which one tells the story best.